Life insurance is a vital tool for creating financial support in the event of an accident or major medical emergency. And the superannuation laws require an SMSF trustee to consider life insurance as part of their fund's investment strategy. Part of that consideration, of course, is where to hold an insurance policy, as there's no requirement to necessarily hold it within the fund. But any SMSF trustee, remember, choosing to go down that path needs to be aware of what that does mean if they hold uh, their policies inside their fund. Joining me today is MetLife Head of Advice Strategy, Jeff Scott. We're going to run through some considerations about holding life insurance within an SMSF. Hello, Jeff. Good to have you with us. Hi, Jason. Thanks for having me. Jeff, can we start with, with a top-down view about um, whether an SMSF trustee or a member should hold insurance inside or outside an SMSF? And what are some of the, the general pros and cons and for, uh, some of the considerations, I guess, when it comes to that decision? I think the first thing is, where does it start from? And the first thing it starts from is the CIS regulations. So regulation 4092E uh, basically says that every SMSF trustee must look at the insurance requirements for each and every member of the fund. And that's part of the investment strategy. So as part of your investment strategy, you need to have an insurance strategy. Now, when I looked at that, we then take a look at the ASIC Report 337 and ASIC Report 575 that effectively states what do you need to go through to actually say that you've actually done your due diligence with this. And effectively what it says is you have to look at your assets, look at your liabilities, look at your ongoing income, um, look at your liquidity, and look at your existing insurance policies that you have elsewhere. So if you already have existing insurance policies elsewhere, whether it be outside super, um, inside super, uh, another super fund, or with your employer, if you already have enough insurance and you don't need any more insurance, then the need for the having insurance policy within your SMSF may be eliminated. Can we maybe work through some of the issues? Because not all cover is the same, not all cover works the same inside an SMSF as it does outside an SMSF. And I, I guess I want to start with the big one, which is the life insurance or, or death. You know, um, yeah, we'll start with the grim one. Um, what estate planning issues arise if you hold life insurance inside your SMSF compared to outside? I think the first thing is who do you want the money to get paid to? And that's the, that's the first thing. So if I have the money, if I have this, this life, life policy or death policy outside super, I can choose anybody I want to be the beneficiary. Once I put it inside my SMSF, now we're restricted by the CIS Act and CIS regs as to who I can, who it can be paid to. So effectively it has to be a CIS dependent or can be paid to my, my, my state or my personal legal representative. So there's this situation say, okay, who is that limited to? Well, it's limited to my spouse. It's limited to my children of any age. It's limited to an interdependency relationship. It's limited to a financial dependency. So if it, I don't fall into one of those categories or it's not being left to my estate, then quite simply, if I put it inside my SMSF, I can't get it to anybody else. The second thing is that if I leave that money to one of those cis dependents, how, how will it be taxed? Now, in most cases, it'll be taxed as it'll be tax free when it gets paid to that beneficiary. But in particular cases, i.e. when it's being paid to an adult age dependent. So let's say that you've got kids who are 35 years old, you pass away in your 70s or 80s, and the money's coming out of your super fund. Since they're adult age beneficiaries, that could be taxed at up to 32%, where that same benefit outside super gets taxed at zero. Now, a, a bit of a subset of that is, is terminal medical conditions. Mm -hmm. um, and one of the issues I'm aware of with that, and can you unpack this a little bit more, is is paying those benefits. Because um, a terminal medical condition is, is something you you would receive a, a payment on that when you're diagnosed with that terminal condition and you get the benefits uh, before you've died. Um, but how? what's, what's uh, the trap? There's been recent private rulings on this from the ATO. And the ATO says timing is everything. So if the money hasn't been paid from the insurance company to the super fund and the super fund hasn't released the money to the member before they passed away, then it cannot be non, non, non assessable, non exempt income. So effectively it can't be paid to them tax free because it's not a member benefit anymore. It's going to be either a state asset or be paying to a beneficiary. So if that's the case, then let's say that my death benefit is being left to my adult age children. Um, I basically, I'm terminally ill. I've had the, I basically put the for, claim forms into the insurance company. If the money gets paid to my super fund and then then eventually paid to me before I pass away, then it's terminal illness benefit totally tax-free. If there's a delay, 
So let's say that I pass away before the insurance company actually put puts the money into the super fund, the super fund has been able to release it to me, then it's now going to be um, classified as a death benefit. And if I leave that death benefit to my adult age kids, then quite simply, they're going to be taxed again up to 32%. So if the, the big thing with this is timing is everything. I want to move on um, to total permanent disability. Uh, one of the things that uh, has been a, a key discussion in the last number of years around total and permanent disability is the any and own occupation. Um, there's been some some questions asked around that, uh, but I know that when that comes to an SMSF, that takes on an extra um, bit of uh, a bit of importance. So, can you sort of pack uh, that any and own occupation, particularly in the context of an SMSF? Yeah. So back. Prior to the 1st of July 20, 2014, um, you could have either own or any occupation definitions inside your SMSF. So there was no restriction on this. The CISREGS 4.07D changed um, on the 1st of July 2014. And effectively what it says is that if you do not meet um, a condition of release under the on, under Schedule 1 of the CIS regs, then quite simply, you can't have that money, you can't have the insurance policy in there and you can't pay it out. So effectively what it did was you, you when we, we then went back and said, okay, what does the permanent incapacity definition look like? Permanent incapacity definition inside under the CIS regs effectively says um, you're unable to work in your usual, sorry, in any occupation you're reasonably suited for based on education, training, and experience, which effectively is an any occupation definition. So any new policies issued from the 1st of July 2014 onwards had to be in any occupation definition if it was going to be inside super. Um, Following on from that, if you'd like uh, coverage that did um, you mentioned before there was any and own occupation and since 2014 it's uh, it's any occupation. So if you'd like own occupation, so a little bit more nuance in that, you'd, would you say you'd be better off than holding that outside in SMSF because you can get that more sort of bespoke offering? Correct. So again, there are there are certain policy designs. So there's certain insurance companies that will let you do actually a split policy. So you have the any occupation definition policy inside super owned by the SMSF and have a linked policy outside super owned by the individual. Um, if it's a linked policy, there's been a couple of product rulings on this um, through the ATO and the product rulings basically say that if you have a linked policy like that, then when you're doing the assessment, you assess first on the any occupation definition inside super first. And if you meet that definition, the TPD benefit gets paid inside super. If you don't meet that definition inside, then we'll look at the own occupation definition outside. Moving on a little bit, um, I want to move to, I, I guess, uh, temporary incapacity or, or income protection insurance. Um, now, there's different ways that's treated um, inside and outside an SMSF based on what you're doing at time of claim. Yes. I just want to unpack that a little bit. So outside of the SMSF, what they effectively do is they say, they'll they'll look at your income that you were earning over the past 12 months because the policies now are indemnity style policies. So look at your income you're earning over the past 12 months and they then pay usually a 70% replacement ratio on that on what your pre-disability income was over the past 12 months. So that's normally the, the, the definition that they look at. Um, now, how is it taxed? It's taxed at your marginal rate of tax, which isn't a problem. You put the exact same policy inside super and almost everything else is identical. So it's taxed at your marginal rate of tax. They look at normally look at your predisability income over the past 12 months. But the problem that you have is that under the under the CIS regs, what they do is they basically sit back and say, they can only replace your income that you were earning at the time of disablement. So the risk that you have by putting that income protection benefit inside super, inside your SMSF, is that if you're not in gainful employment on the date of disablement, then your SMSF is not allowed to pay you an income protection or temporary incapacity benefit. It's ensuring that you're actually in gainful employment on the date of disablement inside your SMSF in order to have that income protection or temporary incapacity benefit paid. So it's there's lots of nuance in this, isn't there? You know, we, we understand the importance of life insurance, but the placement of it is is massively critical in terms of ensuring the policy outcomes uh, are what people need. But one, one area that I'm aware of that uh, typically is held outside of SMSFs uh, is trauma insurance. Yes. Um, can you run through why that's typically held outside and why it's probably not a good idea to hold that inside an SMSF? Yeah, there's a there's a couple of reasons for it. Um, the first one is that again we come back to uh, we come back to uh, the CIS regulation. So 4.07D basically says that if it doesn't meet a condition of release under the under Schedule One, then quite simply you can't have 
that insurance benefit inside super. So the four that do meet that condition of release, one's death, which we talked about before. Second one's terminal illness, which we talked about before. The third one is uh, permanent incapacity or TPD. Again, discuss that. And then the other one is temporary incapacity or income protection. So a trauma benefit does not necessarily meet a condition of release. So from that perspective, no new policies, no new trauma policies can be inside your SMSF um, if they were issued on or after the 1st of July, 2014. So it's, again, almost, it's over nine years now. Um, the other situation was that when both the ATO and both the ATO and APRA looked at this in the past, they said, okay, if I pay a trauma, if I happen to have trauma inside my, my super fund, inside my SMSF, does it breach a sole purpose test? So does it meet a condition of release? And is there an unreasonable diversion of assets of the fund to pay for the premium? So again, it's it's basically proceed with extreme caution. So if you if you come across if your if your SMSF has a trauma policy in there and it was issued prior to the first of July 2014, is that illegal? And the answer is no. But the proceed with extreme caution is it may breach sole purpose test if when the benefits paid, it doesn't meet a condition of release or there's too much, the premiums are so high that it's a reasonable diversion of assets to the fund. So again, um, why is, I basically say to people, if there's a way to transfer ownership from the SMSF trustee to the individual outside super, please do so because it creates far less hassle for the individual and for the trustee. Excellent. Look, Jeff, there's so much to unpack there and we could probably talk for, for, for much more time, but I really want to thank you for your time. Uh, there's uh, there's good stuff, some good takeaways in there. And uh, yeah, thanks for joining us today. Thank you very much, Jason.